Will you start with the story of your recent birth? You sent me an email as we were coordinating this and you said, oh, I just got out of this really long birth. And you said, I've seen three placental abruptions. You might want to tell the audience what a placental abruption is. You said, I've seen three placental abruptions in my career and they were all a certain type of person. And I guess you had a placental abruption in a recent birth. So will you start with that story? What's common among the placental abruptions? What a placental abruption is? And maybe, you know, a little bit about about placental health and how you correlate it with what you see women eating. Yeah, I think that's the elephant in the room for sure. This is the question I usually get asked the most about, um, you know, placentas and vegetarian slash vegan diets. And um, I, the placenta abruption is basically the placenta is attached to the uterine wall and um, what can happen sometimes in the birth process. And sometimes even prior to the birth process is the placenta can start to peel off the uterine wall. And so we can get either partial placental abruptions or full placental abruptions. And um, both are really dangerous. They usually include some sort of vaginal bleeding and it's something that like, obviously this is the, the nutrient house for the baby. And if the placenta starts to come off the uterine wall, then we can have some pretty severe consequences for um, the baby. You know, as long as it's, we recognize it and move forward, we can usually make sure that there's no catastrophic adverse events, but it is something that it's a very dangerous situation. So um, I've been a midwife for um, 12 years, but I've been in the birth world for close to 19 years. And over the last almost 19 years, I've seen three placental abruptions in my practice. Um, and all three of them were vegetarian. And then I had a full placental abruption and that was a raw vegan. And there is this anecdotal. We actually just looked right before we started this podcast and there's nothing that's in the medical literature that has to do with the significance of a vegan or vegetarian diet and placental health. Um, but it's something that as midwives talking, um, you know, in, in peer review, uh, we, we commonly see that same thing. There's several midwives that won't even take uh, vegetarian or vegan clients. I take them in the hopes that I can change their nutrition throughout their pregnancy, because I really want them to focus on what they're craving. And you will always hear those vegetarian or vegan moms say that they're craving meat. So, um, my sister was a vegetarian for 25 years. And the second she got pregnant, I mean, I tried preconception, but the second she got pregnant, I'm like, you have no other choice. You will start eating meat. And she lives in Sweden and her husband actually went out and got them a moose. And she had like the most beautiful moose meat throughout her whole pregnancy. And now she's like almost full carnivore. So um, her body just felt so good in that state that she just craves it all the time now. I, Spoke to another, uh, I believe it was a doula or a midwife. I believe it was a doula um, who had a midwife friend. And the quote from this woman uh, on Instagram that she shared with me was that all of the vegetarian placentas and vegan placentas that she had seen looked like the placentas of smokers. Have you ever delivered a smoker's baby? Um, How many women are still smoking in the pregnancy? Yeah, thankfully I have not. Um, I'm sure that there's people that are using cannabis as a medicine throughout their pregnancy, but I think that's going to have a lot different effect on the placenta than nicotine would. Um, But I have not seen somebody that has smoked nicotine throughout their pregnancy's placenta. I have seen pictures, obviously, um, and I would very much correlate what a vegan or vegetarian placenta looks like to that of a smoker's. It's, I mean, the the quality, the consistency, the, um, the color, the calcification, it's, it, it does, it's not healthy. Like you're growing an organ inside of you that's specifically for this pregnancy, that's specifically for this baby. And if that optimal health isn't there, like you need to eat those organs and that meat in order to have that placenta be of the, you know, most optimal health. It's, it's essential. When I first, I'm trying to think the first time I saw a placenta, it might've been when I was in college, I went to Costa Rica and I was pre-med at the time and I live in Costa Rica now, but I was on the East coast of Costa Rica in a hospital in Limon. And they said, how old are you? And I said, Oh, I'm in college. I said, Oh, you're in medical school. No, I'm in college. And they put me right in the emergency room because I went to a hospital Mm. as like an intern and they let me, Mm -hmm. they was helping deliver babies. And I'm pretty sure I saw placenta for the first time then, but I was struck by this, the complexity of this thing. Uh, To me, it looked like a pretty large, thick blood and, and vessel pancake. That may sound gross, but it's really a pretty incredible no, it's thing. Good I mean, description. I mean, how would you describe a placenta to somebody that's never seen a placenta? I imagine most women are familiar with what a placenta is, or maybe they've seen it, but maybe not. Like, what does a placenta look like? 
it, it looks like an organ. Like, I mean, it doesn't look exactly like a liver, but it does have that same like gelatinous consistency to it usually is about the size of your hand or bigger. And I've seen placentas much bigger than that before, but if anything smaller than the size of my hand, I really start to worry about what mom's nutrition was like prenatally. And then I usually see lower birth weight babies with placentas that are smaller than the size of my hand. Um, it has what's called cotyledons, which are these spongy type, um, tissues that will stick to the inside of the uh, uterus. And then there's the fetal side. So the fetal side is kind of, if you turn it over, the placenta over, it looks like the tree of life. Um, So it has all these beautiful vessels that go up that attach to the cord insertion. And then the cord insertion takes the umbilical cord over to the baby's belly button. Um, And so, you know, they're beautiful. you, You look at this placenta and you're like, this is the original tree of life here. Like, it's just absolutely stunning. And so lucky for me, I get the cream of the crop where I have people that are seeking home birth because I only do home births and they're coming into this as more alternative, more health friendly. There you go. There's some good pictures of it. Um, And so I get people that tend to be in really good health. And so I usually see just absolutely stunning placentas most of the time. It's funny. I just posted a picture of me holding a placenta on my Instagram this morning. So, (laughs) Um, but yeah, no, the, the placenta's you can absolutely tell mother's health by how her placenta looks. It makes sense. Here's an organ that mom is growing over the course of Mm -hmm. nine months of pregnancy. And we don't get to see mom's other organs. We don't get to see mom's liver or mom's heart or mom's pancreas or mom's spleen or mom's kidneys. Usually when, when they're birthing a baby, but you get to see this placenta, Mm -hmm. you get to see this organ that they grew. So it makes sense that it would be a reflection of their health and how interesting it's just observational. It's anecdotal. I wish we had more, consistent research about this, but you and I both know that the medical establishment is biased toward plant-based diets for crazy reasons uh, and away from animal-based diets for nonsensical reasons. And so it's hard to get this research done, but Mm -hmm. it it is so interesting that this, that in your experience, in the experience of doulas and midwives that I've connected with through Instagram, and then the experience of your colleagues as well, that there's this consistent observation that placental health essentially correlates with animal foods in the diet. Would you agree with that statement? 100%. 